Hey, this is Paul Soltz. Welcome to this lesson. We're going to teach you how to work with Xcode a little bit. We're going to open up Xcode and customize it for coding. Let's go up to our Xcode preferences on the menu bar, then click on preferences. And what we're going to do is set up a couple things. The first thing I want to set up are line numbers. If you don't have this enabled, we're going to learn how to turn that on. You just go to text editing in the middle and click on line numbers. That will enable them so that when we're actually looking at some code, let's jump over to some code. I'll open our side panel on the left and we'll go into viewcontroller.swift. In here, we can now see those line numbers. I can switch back to the preferences. If we just jump back, you can see what happens when you disable them, they're gone and they're back. It's way easier to have them open. The next thing I wanna show you is how you can customize the font. You can make it look different. There's some different presets in here. You can just jump through these depending on what you're trying to do, and you'll see that the code will change dynamically. Now, new in Xcode 9, we can actually change the font size without going through that menu. So if you like the current font that you're working with, and I tend to work with the default settings, then what we can do is we can do the command plus and minus keys to change the font size. So I can make it bigger and I can make it smaller really quickly. So this is super useful. And if you want to reset it back to the default, then just do control command and then zero. And that should reset to whatever the default setting is for the particular font that you're using. All right, so that's how we can set that up. The next thing that I want to show you is how to enable errors on build failure. Now I've noticed that the behavior in Xcode has changed a little bit. And so I want to go over this so that you can find the errors when they do happen. There is a behaviors tab in your preferences. So if you come back to the preferences, then you click on the build section for fails. You wanna make sure that yours looks like mine. So enable this checkbox for the bezel in the notification, and then enable this checkbox to show the issue navigator. So these are some drop downs that you have to select the correct one, and then navigate to the first issue. Now, sometimes I see that this doesn't work. I might actually throw in this one if we switch back to the current editor and we'll see if that does anything. Uh, I've been having issues where it doesn't always show me the code when it's broken and we can test that out uh, at the, the end. But let's now just leave that as is. So pause the video if you need to catch up and fix Xcode so that it's going to behave correctly. And then we'll just close that and let's go to some code. Now, before I get into actually testing it, let's just delete some code. I'm gonna just delete this boilerplate code. So I'm removing the did receive memory warning. So you can just select that, that's lines 18 through 21 and just hit delete. You don't need it. And once you read this message the first time, you also don't need that. That's a comments, forward slashes or comments, which are just messages for the programmer. We don't need that to get started. All I want you to do is do a print statement and print out your name. So just type in prints and then I'm gonna do hi Paul. And that's all we're gonna do. So we're in our view did load method in the view controller. If we play this app, we should see a print statement appear on our console output. And that's what we see down here. So it says, hi Paul. Hopefully it says your name, don't use Paul unless your name is Paul. Just make it print out your own name. All right, so that's getting that to work. Now, what happens if we have an issue? Let's say I change this T to a capital T. Now, code is case sensitive and spelling sensitive. So if I accidentally made that change and then I was working on the UI and let's say I'm moving things around and I go to run my app and then what happens, we get some kind of error and it's still, not, it's still not popping up exactly like I'd like to see it, but it is notifying me that I have an error. And if we click on this error once, we will get a, a message about the error and we can fix that by making this a lowercase t. We do that, we can run the app again and it should work and then we're good to go. So you can type other messages like invalid code, And if there's nothing that matches, you're gonna have an issue. So when we go ahead and try to run this, this will not work, okay? And a quick tip, you can copy error messages. So if you see an error message, you can copy and we can jump on over to Safari if you do get stuck and you can delete the first part. So before you press enter in Safari or Chrome, 
just delete the path because that's not going to give you a good search result and just type in exactly what you see here. So this is the error message. We press enter and we should see some errors that hopefully will help you solve your problem. All right. So that is how to search for errors and get help. You can remove buggy code just by deleting it and typing it again. And I've got another bug tip video that's later on in the lesson. So I first want you to get started. I don't want to have all these tips up front because if you don't actually write some code, you're not going to hit these problems. So there's a there's a couple bug fix videos that I'm going to include in this lesson. If you do encounter a problem, just watch those and you can fix your problems. All right, so let's get started with connecting our user interface to the code. Hey, this is Paul. Real quick before you go, I've got all the source code over here on the right. If you want to download the source code, go to the link that's over on the right or down below. You can grab that code. If you like that, click the like button. Also, before you go, once you go to this site, you'll see a little form. If you fill that out, type your email address in here and click the download now button. That's going to send you an email with all the source code. So just check your email in order to get started. All right, so this has got a lot of design resources from Sketch to PNGs to Xcode projects is going to be very useful. Lastly, click the subscribe button, which is over my head. If you want to get updates when I have new videos, I'm going to be posting regular content on a weekly basis. And then last but not least, just like this video if you found any of the topics that I talked about helpful. I'm going to be showing you the next step in the next video. So let's go do that.